The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. I'll figure it out. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. What I want to keep an eye on you. Dramatic hand swipe. Very well. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means so you, you don't have to learn your way around town. You do not have a federal agent, right? George, we better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Don't know what that is. Thank you. Okay, and howdy doody everybody. Welcome to the next part of uh, Deadly Premonitions where we are going to drive to the hospital. Let's observe it. Yes, it's a car. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> when did I get this thing on me? Oh, and it's gone. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. <laughs> George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the <laughs> autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Mm. <laughs> well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. <laughs> she likes me more than she likes you. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh, they're swipers. Oh my god. Can I actually use swipers? Oh, <gasps> there they are. Yeah, baby! Oh, let's book it! Oh. <laughs> turn on my sirens! Can I turn on the- oh my god! Yeah, here we go, the banter. Oh, I am so sorry. I'm st oh my god, I am stuck. Uh... What the hell am I stuck on?! Help me! Oh, okay. But uh, that didn't happen. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because oh you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to Crap. treat women carefully. Like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, wait, they can cut wait, scars on way? your face, just like yours, right? George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Crap. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. It's awesome. It makes us it gives some character. So, Emily, tell me, is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is to small to road? your city eyes, but any gathering of people going? leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray uh, pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now, that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is, the monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. I hope this is the way. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. I hope this is the way. I have no idea where the hell I'm going. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, that's right. I have... Yeah, I mean, I mean, baby. Oh, uh, am I supposed to take this road? Oh! Where did that wall come from? <laughs> I'll let you know, I'm having way too much fun with this awful driving. This car, when it goes on the grass, <laughs> it gets stuck and it swirls and 
it swivels. <laughs> and oh uh, yeah, let's blame it on the car. <laughs> I'm a police officer. I go where I want. Drive on the wrong side of the road. Oh, this is my turn. See that? Perfect turning. Oh my god. <laughs> the mouse sensitivity in the car is wonderful. Look at that. Oh god. It's moving my head too fast. I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> That's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning. No, no, it's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. <laughs> An FBI poncho! Oh, that's awesome. Makes it harder to become sleepy for a short while and recovers a little tiredness. Coffee. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, she's adorable! Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books book. are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. I love reading. Oh, I have one right here. It's called uh, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep?" I bought it, and I'm, I'm soon gonna read it. But right now, I'm reading "The Orc King," which is a Dungeons and Dragons book. Cause I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons nerd, just to let you know. But yeah, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep?" is the book that was mentioned in at the very end credits of my Blade Runner game series. It mentions the game was based off the movie, which was based after the book, and here we go. Why? What's going on? Oh, nothing. Dr. Johnson should be in the computer room. Fiona is the cutest. I adore her. Um, is there a map? Oh my god, there is a map. Nice. Okay, so, can I... Oh, I can move it. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Um, I'm assuming that's me. A am I the blue guy? No, that's... Oh, that's him. Oh, I'm the green arrow. Where arrow? <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, oh, and... Here, wait. Oh, four. Hard to go back. I see, I see. You have anything to say? Let's go to the room. We need to find Usha. 
let's go. I'm not the best at coming up with creative accents. I did like my one accent for that one little child in uh, um, one shot that game. This is one guy in my acting class does a phenomenal um, Irish accent. I'm here! The FBI agent! Just call me York. Him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key oh. already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's, it's a chess. simple puzzle. Zach, I'm... let's take him up on his challenge. Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. Absolutely not. But let's do it, because I know nothing about chess. Uh, yeah, the... The... That... That's the queen, right? And that's the king? And that's the rook, that's the knight, that's the bishop, and that's a pawn. Uh, so the king passes the rook and meets the bishop, and the knight takes a pawn to the queen. Oh! Oh, so, I, right? Oh, so I'm supposed to put it in by, by thing, right? King passes the rook and meets the bishop, and the knight takes a pawn to the queen. What? Oh, wait, what? Oh, I mi I messed up the the bishop and the rook. Oh, Jack, I see, I see. Missing. Yeah, I know, I know. I Let's. Can I do it again? Give me a second chance. Do it again. Do it. I can do this. I I mixed them up. I I see up there. Yeah, the king takes. This is the rook, and that's the bishop. And then the knight takes the pawn to the queen. Checkmate. Carmi, my other kitty. Hi. <laughs> that smile is the creepiest night. The doctor it. awaits below with the deceased. He's in the morgue. Another code? He's in the morgue, but idiot! No way to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right Dramatic now. Dramatic hand swish. No need. He's George. in the morgue. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This the is morgue? not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. He's Dr. in the morgue. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below the being morgue. underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Now my time. My turn to do then the it's dramatic time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. In the morgue. Nah. He waits below with the deceased. What could that ever mean? We're in a hospital. Where would there be deceased people? I can't figure this out. Duh. <laughs> And that's why I'm the FBI agent. <laughs> Kitty. Onwards! Kitty. If you stand in front of me, you're just gonna get covered in kisses, Kitty. Whoa! <laughs> she almost fell over. I was holding her and then I let her go and she almost tipped. <laughs> Oh, kitty. Um, are these stairs, perhaps? Or am I just going outside by accident? Because I didn't bother to look at the map. We're just going on an adventure. <laughs> Onwards! We'll find it eventually. Oh! Yay! Metal! That's what you get when you don't, uh, you know, look at the map. And you just go onwards. Onwards! Kitty! I remember correctly, I really should save it. Like I said, I played this um once on the Xbox years ago. <laughs> so I remembered a little bits here and there. Do I, I don't think I really need 
maybe? Do I have hunger? Do I have a hunger bar? The hunger is probably health. Like, oh man, I got punched in the face and now I'm really hungry. <laughs> that punch to the face really made me hungry. That's probably how it works. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? Hey, he's, he's almost as cute as the Rackley girl. This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. I like this hospital. Mm, nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Usher Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call, call me, me York. York. Everyone calls Everyone me that. Everyone calls me that. <laughs> Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. Oh my god, he was in a morgue. Who would that, have ever guessed? That battle of wits, by the way. <laughs> Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. I mean, if I had, you well, know... it was pretty fun. Common I'm glad sense. you liked it. <laughs> we don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. <laughs> I like this doctor. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Everybody the skull is up glance at your right hand. But that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. I almost said what Which wound? means <laughs> she was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. So she knew the she also doesn't appear to have been bound oh, nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. No. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. Or a blow column A, low column B. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. He watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. Yeah, he was just being helpful. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed, 
right after the movie on TV ended, so around 1 a.m. What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. I remember that movie. Directed by John Landis, 1981. Good movie. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. <laughs> okay, so. Let's find something that the doctor couldn't have found. Traces of the evaporated liquid around her eyes. She must have cried before she was murdered. Judging from the impressions, she was holding something in her hand, but it was removed after... It was removed around six hours after death. The object was circular with a relief shaped like a piece mark. What am I observing here? And his body is laying on the table. She's neatly wearing fake fingernails. Anything about her feet? Beautiful blonde hair, stunning even in death. The tongue has been removed. Look at the edge of the stump. That's a potato! That was what was in her mouth. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Mm. Zach, it's all starting to come together. Yeah, it's very the sad. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. Cut out her tongue and then just... At the estimated sad. time of her death, it was still raining. But you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. So, hmm. be careful. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. Oh. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Oh. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for <laughs> George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with any. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of he death. bit her tongue off. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. Mm. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. Yeah. <laughs> what was inside? Jackpot sack. A shame, but our old time all American sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. It's the same things he had in his car. I noticed right away. How many does he have? Holy crap! There you go. Amazing, huh? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. 
So is the Seer coming, right? I mean, I'm assuming Bishop this means... Bishop takes queen. His rook takes your queen. Then your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Huh? Chess? Oh. My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Yeah. So, it's a serial killer? It's someone he's been chasing for some time, I'm assuming? I'm assuming all those bags means that he's come across this before. That many hmm? victims. I mean, this is just me guessing. But that's what it seems to say. Hmm, let me just take a second, smoke a little bit of my cigarette, and so then they're here. stare at this thing behind me. Yeah, I know, I noticed. Can I just, uh, I really want to buy one, because... <laughs> $35 for a pack of crackers? Are you kidding me? No way, I'll take one off a dead body, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I was going to let it go a little bit longer but perhaps this would be a much better way place to save it I mean end it nah I don't think it's been that long yet I'm thinking a little bit longer um, I, I, it's been a while so I don't remember aha spacebar yeah, spacebar and then okay and then how, uh, oh I could you know yeah okay I'm just practicing I hear something. I hear something. You hear something? I hear something. Where is the body? Take out your mission knife. We're on a mission. Oh. <laughs> Can I just... Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Where does this light come from? Where, that he has this light shining out of his chest. Look, his heart is so bright; it's shining a light out from in front of him. Or it's his eyeballs. Where's this light coming from? Don't don't question it. Just enjoy it. I did because there were shining bloopies in front of it. Yes! I got ammo! Heck yeah! Oh, um, I don't remember. Oh, yep. Yes, I do. But this calls for a mission. We're on a mission. We need our knife. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready, Zach? I mean, that's me. Are you ready, York? Let's go. Oh, okay. I need... I guess I have to put it away before I open the door. <laughs> oh! Where? Cover! Yeah! Still got it. Oh. Uh, why can't I zoom up? The, there we go. Oh, okay. That. What? What the hell? You, she was spinning. Okay, I, th I, th I thought this. Oh. Okay. Uh, reload. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, metal. Okay. I don't know how long. This will take me. It felt a lot longer on a computer on the Xbox. I just remembered it felt like it took a while, but so I'm gonna end the part right here. Actually, right here in the pause screen. So I love this pause screen. Look, the de the deer's head moves and it blinks and stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut it. Call it quits here today for this part. And uh, you know, if you're enjoying this series let me know because I'm having a load of fun and I shall see you in the next part